What does Hassan Rouhani's landslide victory in the Iranian presidential election mean for the rest of the world, and especially Syria? I'll ask a prominent former Iranian diplomat who is a friend and ally of the president. Also on the show, is Canada under Trudeau really the bastion of liberal and progressive values that so many think it is? We'll find out. Sayyid Hussein Moussaoui, and thanks for joining me on Upfront. In last week's presidential election, Iranians voted overwhelmingly uh, for Hassan Rouhani, your good friend and ally. They put him back in office for a second term. He's been called a moderate, a pragmatist. He defeated his uh, very conservative opponent pretty decisively. What can we expect from President Rouhani on the international stage in the next four years that'll be different to the last four years? In during his first term, the big issue for the big powers, for United Nations Security Council, for the regional countries, for Iran, was the Iranian nuclear issue. In the second term, he would really like to focus on the regional issues to bring peace, cooperation, engagement, diplomacy. With the neighbors. With the neighbors. And of course, with the neighbors, <clears throat> things have changed a lot since he became president in 2013. In fact, internationally, things have changed since President Rouhani first came to power. Uh, you now have Donald Trump as president of the United States, uh, not Barack Obama. Trump has been visiting the neighbors, Saudi Arabia, Israel in recent days, both of which, like Trump, see Iran as the biggest threat to the region. Uh, Trump called on all nations to isolate Iran in his recent uh, Middle East tour. Does President Rouhani have a plan to avoid Iran getting even more isolated in the region than it already is? I think his plan is clear. One side is his readiness to sit directly, friendly, sincerely, to discuss, negotiate with the neighbors, to hear their concern, to elaborate Iranian concern, and to look after a mutually accepted face-saving solution. The problem is whether Saudi Arabia would be ready or not, because within the GCC, yeah. some countries like Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, they are ready and mm. they like to make peace. But Saudi Arabia now prefers to uh, ally with Israel rather than Iran to fight Iran. Okay, but it's not just Saudi Arabia, of course. Uh, you know, there are <clears throat> other Gulf countries. There is Jordan, Egypt, Turkey. They don't see Iran as friendly. They don't see Iran as peaceful. They see your country supporting a brutal Arab dictator, Bashar al-Assad, who has massacred tens of thousands of civilians in his own country. That is the number one reason why they don't like Iran right now, or why they say they don't like Iran for that specific look, reason. Mehdi, and it's a pretty good reason. No, look, Mehdi, in Syria, what is the reality? The first reality is that from the international point of view, from the international view of law and regulations, Assad is the legal government of Syria. It is Assad who has ambassador. It is not ISIS who has ambassador in Therefore, legally, based on international rules and regulations, still Assad government is, illegal, is the legal government of Syria. One. I'm not disputing the legal reality. Second. Okay. Second, 40% of Syria is in the hand of ISIS. 20% of Syria is in the hand of al Qaeda. 60% of Syrian land is in the hand of terrorists. What Iran is okay. doing what Iran is doing, based on the request and invitation of the legal government in Syria, Iran is uh, supporting the Syrian government, Syrian army, to fight terrorists in... Okay, but, but that's an Assad strategy no, no, to say everyone on. who's against him is a terrorist. No, no, no. You know full well no, no. that there are Syrian opposition groups no. who are not terrorists, who are not, no, what, uh, what, quote, unquote, no. jihadists. What, what internationally is accepted, everyone, including the U.S., ISIS is terrorist, al Qaeda is terrorist, Jabhat al-Nusra is terrorist, and 60% of Syrian land is in the hand of terrorists. And you know what else is accepted internationally? That Assad is responsible for the majority of deaths in Syria. No. 
That is, is accepted it internationally. It is not United Nations Security Council decision or a statement. I think you'll Never. find... Never. It I, is not. It is the U.S. The United Nations the Secretary United General, Nations, Ban Ki-moon, the former United States no, no. talked about Assad committing war crimes, no, starving up. people. Hold up. He never Perhaps said the Iranians war crime. weren't listening when he what? said that. No, no, no. Did he not say? The, no, did no. he not say that starvation no, was up. a war crime and hold being up. used as a tool? The United Nations I Security Ban Council said that last year. resolution is the base. The United Nations Security Council resolution is the base. Yes. They have never accused. Because Russia is a supporter of Assad and with, will never allow a Security Russia Council resolution. If you look at what UN China Human Rights. Pa- hold on. If you, look at, what UN, of if you look at the UN Human Rights reports, you look at UN rapporteurs, UN special envoys, they have all leveled very serious accusations against the Assad no, government. For you to deny that no, is no, absurd. No, hold on. The reason too many people, Syrians, have been killed is not because of Assad is because the other countries recruited tens of thousands of terrorists from all over the world, from Chechnya to US to Europe, and, from uh, Yemen, Saudi I'm Arabia. I'm questioning... No, no, I'm hold question. on. I've, I've when, interviewed Syrian opposition people on the show, and I've asked them about that. No, no, I'm asking you about Iran. You're no, very no. cleverly deflected away from it. No, Iran no. is supporting a government which is killing civilians. Iran is providing is, weapons, arms, money. It is sending in militias to kill civilians. This is what Amnesty is says. Not, this no, is no. what Human Rights Watch says. Are they no, all making maybe. it up? Look. Are they all making it look, up? In your view. If you if you agree the Syrian government is a legal government, is the legal government of Syria. The government of North Korea is also legal. So what? We're talking about war it crimes being matter. committed against your own people. Just because you're a legal can you, government. Can you tell me then what Saudi Arabia army is doing in Bahrain? Because everyone is considering the minority government in Bahrain so why as a legal... So why doesn't Iran support the Bahraini government then on the same ground? It's the no, legal government. No, no, because... Why the double standard? Because of foreign intervention. Why the double... You're the Look, foreign intervention in Syria. No, no, no. Saudi's the foreign intervention in Bahrain. You're both as bad no, as no, each other. No, no, hold on, hold on. There's a clear double no, standard here. No, no, Mehdi. Uh, my point is this. Look, listen just for a minute. You agree because the government of Bahrain has invited Saudi Arabia army and police to come to Bahrain. And you support that decision, do you? Hold on, hold on. Therefore, you say this is legitimate for Saudi Arabia. It's your argument, not no. mine. You're saying if a no, legal government invites in. I mean, if you talk to anyone, yeah. they would say it is the legal government of so Bahrain. So do you support the Saudi intervention in Bahrain? No, we don't. Oh, but you support no. the Iranian intervention no, no, in Syria? No, hold on. Hold, hold on. You don't support the Saudi intervention in Bahrain, which you say is a Bahraini legal government, but you do support Iran's intervention in Look. Syria. Do you see the double standard? No, no. It is you not don't double see standard. the double standard. The it's double in front standard, of your face. The double standard wow. is this, as Mehdi. This is what you don't listen. Iran is supporting the Syrian government to fight foreign terrorist, uh, terrorists in their land. There are not foreign terrorists in Bahrain. There are not tens of thousands of foreign terrorists in Bahrain. This is a big difference. Okay. This is but it pure, is a legal government. This is pure argument. Bahraini nation. Okay. We're not going to agree uh, on, on what's happening in terms of civilian casualty, even though pretty much every human rights group in the world says Assad is responsible for the majority of death. Do you, We're not going to agree on that. No, and do I, you accept... And with respect, accept, I'm going to take human rights watch no, as word Do you yours. accept how uh, tens of thousands of civilians have been killed by terrorist groups in Syria? I don't know if it's tens of thousands. Clearly thousands have been killed. The number as I've seen therefore, from most of the surveys are that Assad has killed the yeah, majority of civilians. Because the majority the, of refugees are fleeing from Assad. Because the fight Assad. is between the government okay. and the terrorist groups, civil, civilians are the victims. Okay. Civilians are the victims. And let's come back to this question. Given so many civilians have died, given Assad has been held responsible, wrongly in your view, but in the view of many around the world, for those civilian deaths, given Iran is backing Assad to the tune of $6 billion a year, according to the UN Special Envoy, do you understand why you're so unpopular? Why President Rouhani has such an uphill battle to try and convince Arabs that he's a friendly government? Iran policy is to eradicate terrorists from Syria first. Second, to support the Syrian nation to have free election. But the others are pouring terrorists to Syria to bring a regime collapse in Syria and to put terrorists in power in in Damascus. This is the real fight. You say foreign terrorists are pouring into Syria. Iran has brought foreign fighters into Syria. Hezbollah from Lebanon is not Syrian. Afghan fighters. Iran has rounded up Shia fighters from Afghanistan and sent them into Iran to fight. You from as far say, as Afghanistan. You may say uh, Russian troops over there, they are terrorists. Russian, no, no, Russian troops is the army. Russian troops. You have sent militias Russian in troops who are not Syrian. 
Iranians, they are invited, Mehdi. This is the point. Afghan fighters were no, invited no to problem. come into Syria. If, if the Syrian government wants wow. to bring anyone to fight the terrorists, why not? But if Hezbollah is a foreign group considered a it terrorist by a lot of other people Syrian on the ground government. in the Middle East. It is invited by Syrian government. Okay. You don't recognize the fact Syria has a legal, internationally legal government, and you want to recognize the terrorists to fight Assad. You, this is the big difference. You, you are supporting the terrorists you, to fight Assad, to bring a regime change with well, weapons, supporting anyone. Let's money just be clear from about that. all over the country, uh, all yeah. over the world. Yeah. Weapons to Syria, it seems, terrorists to Syria, to be bringing you, regime change. What you seem you to be saying, saying is that Saudi are bringing in foreign fighters, Iran's bringing in foreign fighters. The only difference is you got invited by Assad, who isn't seen as a legitimate president by me. many Syrians. Mehdi, it's it your argument. Me. Your it is argument. not me. You remember publicly Joe Biden at Harvard said, our problem, the U.S. problem, yes. is U.S. allies. He named Turkey, Saudi Arabia, yes. Emirates. He, he said they are bringing the terrorists. But he was also part of a U.S. government which accused Iran of supporting massive war crimes. You're selectively quoting no, 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 from the are, U.S. government. No, no, they are always blaming Iran. This okay, is not that's what I'm new. saying. So you're cherry picking no, your no, U.S. No, government. They are quotes. always blaming Iran. But when the U.S. recognized okay. the problem in Syria is because of the U.S. allies, Pouring money, weapon, terrorists to bring a regime change. I don't think they ever said it, it was is the not only Iranian problem. Narrative. I don't think they ever said it was the only problem. You're, you're cherry picking. But let me just, we've got to move on. One last question on Syria. You say that Iran is in Syria only to fight against foreign terrorists. That's your aim. Um, uh, the Syrian opposition. I interviewed Basma Kudmani, who's a spokesperson uh, for the Syrian opposition. They say that moderate Syrian rebels will never be able to defeat al-Qaeda and ISIL. They're fighting against al-Qaeda and ISIL, losing a lot of their people fighting against al-Qaeda and ISIL. They say they can't defeat them until the Iranian militias first pull out of the country, because you're giving a reason for those foreign, okay. quote-unquote, jihadists okay. to be there. We they're saying Iran example. pulls out, no. and they will fight Maybe. ISIL here and we have an, we, What do you say to her? No, here we had a conference in Washington, and I asked her. I said, look. Libya, the situation in Libya is like Syria. A total mess, occupied by many terrorists. I told her, did Iran had any interference, any troop, any advisor in Libya? She said, no. I said, who attacked Libya? It was the US, NATO, Saudi Arabia, GCC. Neither Russia nor Iran. They were not involved. They had no role. What is the situation of Libya today? NATO attacked. Saudi Arabia attacked. They removed the dictator. Yeah. And who is going to manage Libya? This and is exactly the same about Syria. Even but the if there is a difference. Hold on. Hold on. There's a difference between Libya and Syria, many would say. The reason Iran's not involved in Libya is because it's Sunnis fighting Sunnis. In Syria, Iran has an interest in propping up a minority Alawite government, a subsect of Shia Islam. Iran is a Shia majority country. So it's a sectarian intervention by Iran, is what a lot of your critics would say. That's why you care about Syria and you don't care about Libya. It is not important whether Iran is caring about Libya or, Libya or not. My issue is this. If Saudi Arabia, if GCC, if Arab League, if NATO can manage Libya, Iran is not there. Russia is not there. There is no interference. They cannot blame Iran. Why they cannot manage Libya? Why they okay. removed the we dictator could, we and could, left Libya to the terrorist We can groups? argue all day long about who's to blame in Syria. We're not going to Therefore, agree. The issue, but let me ask you this. What is President Rouhani going to do differently or the same with President regard to Rouhani Syria? President Rouhani is ready to sit with Arab neighbors, with Saudi Arabia, with Egypt, to offer what? with Turkey. Because Iranian proposal is the four regional powers, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Turkey, Egypt, they sit together to agree that to preserve the integrity, unity of Syria, to eradicate okay. the terrorists first. Second, to agree on a system of power sharing, Sunnis, Alawites, uh, Kurds, Does Christians. Does power sharing involve Bashar al-Assad standing down? It is stage? not the issue. We are not talking about But person. would President Rouhani agree? No, no, hold Do on. you think President no, no. Rouhani would agree for Bashar no, no, al-Assad to stand no, no. down? Hold on. First of all, let's agree about the principle. Okay, but not we don't about have time to go through a whole detailed plan. I'm no, no, it a big, is not the detail. A big plan. question. Would President Rouhani agree in second term you, no. for Bashar al-Assad to I will tell down? you, if, if we go to the third principle, a free election supervised by United Nations, not by Assad. 
for Syrian nation to decide to elect their next president, not for Iran, not for Saudi Arabia, who should rule Syria. And what if decide. Assad says no? Will President Rouhani put pressure on him, force him to the table to agree if to that? If the regional powers, based on these three principles, and letting the Syrian nation, not the other countries, to decide who should rule Syria, and to agree terrorists should go, and then a power sharing system, if this is a United Nations Security Council resolution, Iran would 100 percent support the UN resolution and would not care who is opposing, who is not. Okay. We're running out of time. I want to talk briefly about Yemen, where millions of civilians, especially children, are on the brink of starvation, partly as a result of a siege and a bombing campaign by the Saudi-led coalition. But look, on the other side, opposition Houthi fighters have also been accused of human rights abuses, of violating international humanitarian law. How long will Iran continue supporting the Houthis? I think Yemen is much easier, Mehdi, to be very frank. You know very well. Zaydis, Houthis, they have been ruling Yemen for 1,000 years. 1963, when Egypt invaded Yemen to remove Zaydis, Houthis, Zaydis, Houthis became ally of Saudi Arabia. Yes. You remember? Yes. For 40, 50 years, Saleh was ally of Saudi Arabia. Former president of Yemen. When Saudi started, to attack militarily, then the Zaydis, the Houthis, they came to look, Iran to get look, support. We can't, we can't have a long history lesson, but okay. the facts of the matter are, the UN, the, the UN, you kept quoting to me the UN on Syria. Yes. The UN passed a resolution yeah. backing the quote-unquote legitimate government of Yemen against the Houthis. The Houthis, the Houthi takeover of Yemen was not sanctioned or sanctified or approved by international law. You have been talking for the whole of this interview about the importance of an internationally recognized yes. government, of international law. No. Does Iran recognize President Hadi as the president Iran of Yemen? Iran definitely recognizes uh, the United Nations Security Council resolution, but Which this resolution... Which backs Hadi and not the Houthis. But this you resolution, back the Houthis in no, no. violation of international law. Saudi Arabia is also bombing Houthis. And I've questioned the not... Saudis bombing. I'm asking Iran. It I'm asking is... about Iran. Your answer to every question cannot be Saudi Arabia. No, Mehdi. I'm asking the why UN is, resolution. Hold on, you gave me a long answer on Syria, saying we are invited by the government to support the government against uh, terrorists, and yet many would say you're doing the reverse in Yemen. Should you we are agree? against the Should we internationally agree? recognized Should government of Yemen? Should we agree that UN resolution is the base or not? Yes. Okay. So why are the you supporting the fighters who are singled out on. by the UN resolution? Hold on. The UN resolution says peaceful diplomacy through peaceful negotiation between Houthis, Zaydis, and uh, the, the government of Hadi to have a new arrangement. Iran the is UN supporting resolution. diplomacy. Let's, let's just be very clear. UN Resolution 2216 reaffirms its support for the legitimacy of the president of Yemen, no Abdul Rabu Mansur Hadi. Do you and does the Iranian government recognize the legitimacy of President Hadi? Iran yes or no? It's no. a very simple question. No. No, Iranian, you don't. No, no. No. What I am saying... I am saying Iran is supporting a peaceful negotiation. What no, 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 no. You're supporting doing... Houthi fighters who have blocked uh, food and medical supplies from reaching civilians, according to Human Rights Mehdi, Watch. this is not fair. For two years, know. for two years, Saudis are killing tens of thousands of and of I've Houthis, asked the Saudis about their bombing of Yemen, destroying the I'm, whole so Yemen. That, so that justifies and you Houthi are war blocking, crimes. You hold are on, hold on. Does you, that ju does that justify crimes by the Houthis? Yes no, it no? is not crime. You are blaming no. Iran because of humanitarian help yeah, I'm to saying, poor Yemenis. No, no, I'm saying. No, no, I'm Iranians saying. Iranians are saying nice, humanitarian help hold to on, Yemenis. Hold on. No, no, no. Actually, according to Human Rights Watch, Houthi forces have restricted food and medical supplies to civilians. Do you not feel a bit, even a little bit bad about supporting group? It is a mistake. Group? Definitely, and this is a mistake. And you support that group? No. You do? No, we are Iran not doesn't going, support the Houthis. No, we are not going to support everything they are doing. It um, is not the case. Let's just, let me just go back to my question, which you avoided answering, because no, we're out of time. No, the point is... Do you support the legitimacy of the president of Yemen as requested by UN Resolution 2216? The resolution. Yes or no? No, you are reading just one part of resolution. Reaffirming Mehdi. its support. For no, the this is one part of the, of the resolution. Of Yemen. It's the only part that matters to this question. No, no, this is one part wow. of. No, the resolution inviting the two parties to sit together Fine. for transitional government. But it also for says solution. it reaffirms its support for the legitimacy of the president of Yemen. Okay. Do you recognize the legitimacy no of the problem. president of Yemen? Let's say the UN is recognizing Hadi as a legitimate government. It does. Okay. 
At the same time, they are inviting Hadi, Houthis, Zaydis to sit together through diplomacy to establish a transitional and government and then go for election. Yeah. This is what Iran is That's supporting. That's the future. But as of now, they're recognizing the government of Yemen as legitimate. You went on and on about Assad being legally recognized, and yet you don't legally recognize your opponents. You, you pick and choose when you See, care about no, international Iran law. Has never How said, convenient. Iran has never said that we do not recognize the legitimate government of Yemen. You're Can not saying you, it today. No. Do you recognize the legitimacy of the government of Yemen? It's a full, say, fourth time, I, I, yes or no? I've totally recognized United Nations Security Council. That's not what I asked. Resolution, do you recognize the, whole the legitimacy of President Hadi as specified by UN Resolution 2216? If, if he follows the UN Resolution okay. to go to peaceful negotiation. But let me ask you this last question. What will the legacy of Rouhani be four years from now, looking back? What's your prediction of the legacy? I think the legacy for him would be First of all, he has a huge support of nation for promoting civil society. I think he already did a great job to bring inflation from 40 to 9 percent in four years. He did a great job to bring growth, uh, economic growth from minus one to plus seven on foreign relations. Rouhani is one side of the coin. His hand is open for engagement, diplomacy, negotiation, cooperation with the regional countries, like the uh, nuclear deal. If Saudi Arabia, if the Arab countries, they are ready, they are the other side of the coin. Rouhani is not everything. He is 50 percent. Whether the others would be ready to sit with Iran, to, to define a new structure for security of the region, to define the, the new uh, cooperation system, to discuss the fears, the concerns of both parties, to agree how we can resolve, how we can secure the sovereignty of each country, non-interference. Okay. Rouhani is open for this. Whether Saudi Arabia, GCC would be ready, this is the other side of the coin. Sayyid Hussein Moussaouin, thanks for joining me on Thank Upfront. Thank you. With the far right on the rise across Europe and the United States, a lot of liberals are looking to Canada as the new bastion of tolerance and progressive values. But is that really the case? Upfront producer Ryan Coles has this week's reality check. Oh Canada, can you do no wrong? With your warm acceptance of refugees and gender balanced, diverse cabinet, you're really showing up the rest of the world right now. Even Americans are lining up to migrate there. But here's the truth. If you think Canada is a post-racial liberal utopia, you have no idea what you're talking about. Despite multiculturalism actually being enshrined in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the country faces numerous problems related to racism and bigotry. In January, a right-wing Canadian with anti-immigrant sentiments murdered six Muslims praying in a Quebec City mosque. In response to the attack, Quebec's premier said, our society is a very open, tolerant, and hospitable place but we're not different from other societies. We have the same devils. Sadly, the attack is a symptom of a wider ill. Hate crimes against Muslims have doubled over the most recent three-year tracking period, and one-third of Muslims in Canada report they have experienced discrimination or unfair treatment in the past five years. Racism and bigotry is not a new phenomenon in Canada either. Just look at the appalling conditions of Canada's indigenous population, where unemployment rates are more than twice the Canadian average, a third of the population is on social assistance, and indigenous women are murdered at vastly disproportionate levels. Now you may be thinking, wait, Canada's current prime minister, Justin Trudeau, you know, the guy known as much for his posing as for his politics, he's working hard to change all this, right? Well, it's not that simple. Trudeau's rhetoric in defiance of Islamophobia has no doubt been commendable. To the more than one million Canadians who profess the Muslim faith, I want to say directly, we are with you. But when it comes to campaign promises to help Canada's 1.4 million Indigenous people, his rhetoric doesn't match his record. An internal report card gave the Trudeau administration a failing grade for meeting its objectives on Indigenous and Northern Affairs. Why the failure to deliver? One obstacle is indigenous land claims currently impeding on close to $650 billion worth of resource projects, projects the Trudeau government supports. Awkward, eh? While the jury on Trudeau's administration is still out, there are plenty of other politicians waiting in the wings with very familiar populist anti-immigrant rhetoric. So yes, Canada deserves a claim for its numerous accomplishments as a nation, but to mask the serious issues it faces within everything is better in Canada narrative is hiding, not helping the problems. 
That's our show. Upfront will be back next week with a special on Israel, Palestine and 50 years of occupation.